Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Embodied Dialogue podcast. My name is Seth Dellinger, and I'm very pleased to have John Cotton with me today. John Cotton is the co-owner of the Circling Institute, and um, I'm a student there. I've been training with John and the others for a couple of years. Um, just an incredible transformative practice that we'll be talking about more during this podcast. Um, and recently, I just found out that John lived at least nine lives before he was circling, but he's been involved in uh, personal development work for many decades. He's led fire walks. Uh, these days, he also runs a business called Total Health Secrets, um, which through working with nutrition, John overcame his own chronic pain, and he's helped thousands of clients through nutrition. So um, anyway, I'm most familiar with John. Uh, in terms of circling, but anyway, welcome so much uh, for, so glad you're here. <laughs> I'm like stumbling over my words, um, but anything else you want to add, John, just to introduce yourself to the people who are listening? Um, no, I think that's good, Seth. It's uh, nice to be with you, and thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, so as I mentioned, I, uh, I've i been involved at the Circling Institute, and um I've been participating in this practice, but I'm going to let you uh, begin to just let people know if they've never heard of it. What is the art of circling? Well, circling, yeah, a lot of people describe it a lot of different ways. I would say it's a, it's a, it's a method of, or it's a way of teaching, coaching, facilitating a pretty nuanced yet comprehensive system of communication that a type of communication that really specializes in, in getting below the surface conversations and sort of getting right to right to the heart of the matter right to what really matters between people and and creates pretty profound levels of of intimacy and trust and connection and bonding um that we don't often get to in most of our everyday conversations. Mm -hmm. And even in, even among the closest people in our life, it's, we don't often get there. You know, we're often talking about our lives and our work and what we did that day and things we have to do and our, you know, that type of things, just stuff that's on the surface level of our mind. And we forget to really connect uh, heart to heart and the, and the, and the, and and the the places that really touch our soul and and that we and matter to us the places we we heard about or we strive for we're yearning about and um and those are the conversations that really really connect people and really make it, it it's safe to be in a relationship with each other mm -hmm. um and, and really lead to to understanding and, and also being being seen and heard and understood and really accepted, not just accepted though, appreciated for who we are at the core is something that's just, we found to be so unbelievably nourishing to a human being and seems to be one of the, one of the missing ingredients in a lot of people's upbringings. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Because we didn't, uh, most of us at least didn't grow up with, you know, highly super conscious parents and teachers and let alone classmates and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know we we're we're mostly taught you know to work hard and and to compete <laughs> and that type of thing but not necessarily how to really support each other or let alone like how to love each other mm -hmm. and, and care each other care about each other how to be compassionate how to be empathic with each other mm -hmm. you know so those are skills that people sort of stumble towards in, in later life as they start to develop deeper relationships, but they've, they've never had like a true education around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You said something like a conversation that touches your soul. And um, I know that for sure, before I was involved with circling, I, I couldn't say that I had those kinds of conversations very often. Um, 
but just to sort of help people get a little more understanding of what it looks like. Um, what's what's also striking is so the, you used the example of, you know, someone really close to you. And of course, even those people we're really close to, sometimes we feel like we we miss when we're trying to talk. But um, the Circling Institute runs a class every Thursday night. And what happens again and again in this class is people come and they don't know what they're doing. They're there for the first time and they're just sort of, they go into a breakout room and they say hello to a couple people. And then there's an introduction of the very first exercise, which is sort of just usually a kind of a back and forth between two partners. Uh, they give them a, a subject to talk about and they give them some guidance. And then when you come back to the main room, people again and again, they're just saying, wow, I've never felt that connected to someone. And it's like, it was like 15 minutes later. So can you, can you kind of fill in the mystery a little of how that happens? <laughs> I, I love that process every yeah. time. I mean, the, the process of just that whole three hour event and yeah, those little exercises, because that is, that's something it's, it's, it's almost a given now that for us that that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like we could like, and, and, and to me, in a way that gives me hope for the world. <laughs> like we could literally go in into almost any group of people, almost anywhere for, potentially in the world. And if, you know, if they truly like want to be there and they want to, that want to learn these skills and these develop these capacities, how to, how to be with each other in a deeper way, then typically the event starts and you could just feel like the anxiousness in the room. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what's what's going to happen? Am I going to have to like reveal myself or am I going to be embarrassed? Or like, what's it going to be like talking with people I don't know and or talking in a group and that type of thing. And then, like you said, they come out of that first exercise and they're so touched mm -hmm. by the by the by the care, the compassion, the authenticity, um, the acceptance, the, the willingness to really want to tune into each other's humanity and and it's like i said it's 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 something that's just so missing in in the world today that it's it's astounding to people mm -hmm. and um so so you asked like how do we do it mm -hmm. so uh, you gave a little bit of 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 reference to it in that we we start out just having maybe people in pairs and something about that makes it safer like you take it out of the out of being in a group down to just, oh, I don't have to worry about talking to one person. So it's a, it's a good icebreaker that way. And we, um, sometimes we just ask them, you know, to get curious about each other, but oftentimes we make it even easier by giving them a topic, like, you know, talk about like, what's the, you know, here's a typical one. Like what's, what's the hardest thing about being you right now? might have them share that for a minute or two and then what's the best thing about being you right now right so they're sharing stuff that's that's deeply personal but also has them introspect has them have to think about it and, and feel into themselves about what's going on for me right now right and then right. and then and then just sharing about that brings up a lot of potential like vulnerability right it's like you don't know how it's going to be received but because we also talk we also before the event um, gets rolling, we have that the set of agreements, right, that we share. Mm -hmm. And so in just sharing the agreements, like the agreement to, you know, to um, communicate with the intention to relate, like to deliberately get personal and open up to each other, right? And then and then people realize, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here for something a little bit out of the ordinary from a, from a typical conversation. Mm -hmm. And the agreement to, and, you know, to own our own experience is part of that. And to let go of trying to control like how the other person sees me and not to fix or, or give advice and all that just makes it safe to just really be ourselves without and without expecting or being concerned about any judgment. Right. Mm -hmm. And then how we listen, the agreement to how we listen is really big. I think that's I think that's one of the biggest changes I see among people who who study this 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 way of communicating is is um the way of listening and the way of being as they listen completely ch transforms and so we listen the way we say it is we listen for each other's deepest humanity mm -hmm. meaning meaning we're not just listening for the details of their life 
like we're listening to what the details say about them underneath the surface, what it says about either how they're feeling right now, what's going on with them. Um, like, like I said, like I alluded to before, what, what they're hurting about, what they're wanting, what they care about deeply, and even who they are at the core. So what does it say about the quality of their character? Their something about their heart, their essence, right? So we're listening very, very deeply for like to understand what it's like to be them, what it's like to walk in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And so we're not listening for whether we agree or disagree or opinions or who's right or who's who's wrong. We're putting aside our whole thought processes and way and 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 ways of being and and or um, ways of thinking. And we're kind of imagining as we listen that we're them. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to see through their, their eyes. So mm -hmm. it's a very different way of listening. So we're listening like empathically. And so just having those agreements and hearing those and then going into that type of communication really sets such a beautiful, safe, safe intention, safe, safe container for people to really share uh, the truth what's going on mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. and then the responses that we have them practice so that so we give so even the just like we call it an authentic relating game even though it's really just sort of exercise to make to playfully embed the practice of really giving conscious mindful reflections so we're not just listening to think about what we're going to say next we're listening to share like both what we're getting about them mm -hmm. and also how they're affecting us. So these are two things that we, in most typical conversations in the world, we don't share. Right. You know, Hi. there's just, I just want to jump in because uh, being part of this practice, I'm familiar with what you're saying, but what I'm noticing, and this is what happens in circling so often is like new things are coming forward for me. And then, of course, when you were talking about what does it mean to listen for someone's deepest humanity, of course, I was like, am I just listening to the words that John is saying right now? Or what am I noticing about John? <laughs> and I was just like, wow, you know, John, he's really cares about this stuff. And he's been deeply, you know, immersed in it for so long, um, you know, and it just comes through. I mean, just your ease in talking, like me stumbling over my words at the beginning of this podcast, because I'm so excited you're here. But it also, um, what also really struck me, I guess, in a new way, was that it, it sounds like you're you're talking about a lot of sort of preparation and we do the agreements and we do these things, but you're also, I think, describing aspects um, of relationship that we all experience all the time. It's just that we rarely put them out into the open. So someone listening to this podcast also might have been sort of, you know, coming up with their ideas about who is this guy, John? Who's this guy, Seth? I think he's kind of like this kind of person or, you know, he, I like him or he rubs me the wrong way or whatever it is. But that's all kind of just the mental dialogue that keeps running. And usually it's almost running interference with the actual dialogue I'm having. because It's like I'm talking to you, but I'm also thinking all this stuff. And then I'm like saying, well, no, I'm not going to say that out loud. I'm going to just say, but it's, so it seems like, um, because it really is what you just described. It happens in like the first 15 or 20 minutes when people walk in the room to the point where they're going, wow, I feel so connected. So it strikes me. There's actually a simplicity to it. It's just almost like we get permission when we go to the circling class to speak in a way that's actually very natural. It's just that for some reason, we haven't been afforded this opportunity in our daily life. Yeah, there was a lot there that you shared that we could we could dip into. I'm just I'm just looking for what to pick the <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right There's a lot. Um, well, that that's what I guess. What if I'll I'll I'll, I'll give you a little um, direction. I mean, I would really be curious about um, this sense that like what you're asking people to do, there's a part of them that already knows how to do it. I guess that would be maybe saying more concisely what, what really came to me as I was listening to you. And it, it's, I think a lot of people, you know, I mean, it's, 
it's all within us. Like we're, we're just we're just born with the with the natural desire to to move towards other human beings, mm -hmm. right? And to and to want to want to relate. We're communal beings, of course, but we don't always get taught that. And if anything, many of us were, you know, a, a, a large number of people have been, you know, somewhat abused in their childhood, whether it's whether it's physically or even not physically, or just maybe emotionally abused, or maybe just not so much abused, but maybe just not being really seen for who they are. I think that's very commonplace and that could almost feel like neglect, mm -hmm. even though you might have like the greatest parents in the world, but if like, if they don't really see you and celebrate you for the unique being that you are and that you're becoming, if they're like seeing you through the eyes of who they want you to be, mm -hmm. right? It's a whole different thing and you feel missed and you feel lonely. So I think a lot of people grew up with that and they shy, they kind of shut down or they shied away and they or they hid themselves away. And so then they didn't get that to express that natural, like what's natural for them, like you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. But yet everybody's had, had has had certainly glimpses of it. Good friends, good relationships tend to open those doorways for us, right? Mm -hmm. But I think there's a, a deep hunger, especially today with communication having having gotten more and more distant, where we can now communicate without even ever seeing each other, um, uh, you know, Facebook and things like that. And we can, and we can, we can write automatic texts and messages to each other with, without ever even seeing the impact that it, ha <clears throat> that it has on another human being. Right, right. And so we tend to lose that attunement to each other. And I think that's the thing that we're that we are bringing back is like, how do we really tune in to another human being? Right, right. And really sense not just what's going on with them, but also like the field between us. Right. And what's happening there. Right. The field in between us. So that's um, it's it's interesting. The field is like uh, that phrase to me feels like it almost like divides people like s some people just run away when you're talking about the field but other people are like okay so we're actually acknowledging that there's some sort of thing that's more than you and I that's present and we can look for that um which i mean i don't know as i say it it <laughs> sounds pretty well, straightforward field, to me field but, might be uh -huh. an esoteric word for for a lot of people but you can but everybody has a word that fits that you could just say you know, the quality of the communication or the tone of the communication. The vibe. <laughs> like everybody can tell yeah. like, oh, like, wow, we're in an angry conversation, you know, or we're in an intense conversation or we're in a very loving conversation. Like, right. you know, those things are kind of obvious. So it's just the fact that that we might be talking about it versus most conversations just kind of ignore that and they just kind of go for the, the details. Right. Like I, I haven't been in too many circles where there's a lot of anger comes out, although I have seen that. But but just for someone to say, wow, it seems like you're really angry. I'm really noticing how angry you are, as opposed to just like I experience the anger and I get defensive or I wilt or whatever. But just so that's something that is different, I think, often in circling is that we just name things that maybe often everyone is aware of. But the, there's the sort of things that we we usually don't name right and then when 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 it, it's sort of on the table so to speak and everyone can see it it, it changes the dynamic completely yeah. that, it, that's a really good point i think what that brought my mind back to was maybe closing one of the earlier loops that that you had started which was uh the like what happens in that first right right first interaction right and um <laughs> I think one of the things that's really unique about that and circling in general, that really changes the game on on the the quality of the of the connection and the communication itself, is that instead of having a typical back and forth conversation where we're you talk, I talk, you talk, I talk, sometimes I'm talking over you, you're cutting me off and and like and I'm 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 like sort of half listening to what you say because the other half of me is is thinking about what I'm gonna say next. And so I'm not really fully listening to you. And, and that that's the typical conversation. But instead, we just we deliberately decide to focus on one person at a time. 
So mm -hmm. like if, if, if it's you, then I give you my undivided attention. And I imagine, and I listen to everything you're saying. And I imagine like what you're feeling as you're saying it. And what's, like I said before, what's going on with you. And then I also know that I'm going to give you reflections afterwards. So, so I'm practicing even more intensely, really, really listening and listening empathically. And so the, the things that the two things that we share that are very unique and that, and that tends to take things deeper because they're inherently a little bit risky and, and in being willing to be a little vulnerable and by taking a little bit of a risk in the communication, you're showing the other person that in a way you're investing into the communication with them. Mm -hmm. And like you're being willing to take a risk so that now it's safer for them to do the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the first one is we is a very start with a very simple phrase. Something I think I'm getting about you is <laughs> you've done this one a thousand times now, right? Mm -hmm. So something I think I'm getting about you is, and then you talk about what you're picking up about them or what type of person they are or what they're feeling or whatever it is you're getting about them from what they just shared, right? And who does that? How many times have you heard that in life before circling? I hardly ever heard that type of thing, right? right? Maybe once in a while, like a friend will, you know, when you're in this really deep conversation or a friend is just really appreciative and you get into those moments of like, you know, really deep care with somebody, they might share, God, this is what I really like about you or this is what i love about you but it's kind of rare and then you know you have those amazing conversations you go how did we get here mm -hmm. like, I, like I, we need a map for this because this is extraordinary right so this is this is like we're putting together the map you know so that's one mm -hmm. of them is something i think i'm getting about you is just to sure. just to add one thing there um what really struck me that you 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 always talk about in the training too is i say Hey John, something I think I'm getting about you, and then I I get it totally wrong. But even when that happens, somehow it can actually it it doesn't necessarily lead to a rupture. It can actually lead to a deepening as long as you get my intention. Like I mean, if if if, if I just revealed to you that I was out to lunch and I was thinking about something else, that probably wouldn't go so well. But if I just sort of make a guess and you're like, no, that's not quite it, then you might just say, let me tell you how it actually is. And it can still lead us forward. So, so there is that risk. And of course, when I kind of make a wrong guess, I do kind of feel like a little like, uh, but, but it, it, I've seen it again and again that it, the conversation, and, the relationship deepens. Yeah, and, and it's it's kind of rare that somebody is completely off base. Right. Usually, yeah. they they get the essence, or maybe they missed a major point, or they misinterpreted something, or whatever. But they got some of it, and mm -hmm. yeah, and what you're saying is so true. Like the person here is that their intention is to really try to understand them. They're not just listening at a distance. They're actually, actually trying to get in there with them and trying to feel what it's like. And right. that right. means the world to people. Like, wow, they care enough to actually want to know. So so yeah, I'm going to tell them. Now, now I have permission to even correct them. Mm -hmm. you know, but like you said, in trying to correct them, like if you're if you're get if you're trying to explore me at a deeper place and take a guess that sort of you know, takes me down into this off the surface and into, you know, a little bit more deeper understanding of myself, then to figure out like how to respond to you, I have to sort of go down here too. So right. even if you're wrong, I have to go down here to correct you. And now the conversation has come out of the surface conversation of everyday details. And we're into a deeper connection of mm -hmm. like talking about what it's like to be us, right. and what it's like to be together. Yeah. So oh, yeah. something I think I'm getting about you. And then what, what's another phrase uh, maybe so, as we progress so through the conversation? So that, that's the one for like to express the empathy part of it. Like, and we call that getting someone's world, like getting an understanding of what their inner world is like for them, right? And so that that tells you that you're really listening from their perspective, right? Not Not just from your opinion or your your thoughts or do I like you or not like you? But if you really feel a person's humanity and you really walk in their shoes, then every way of being that they have, even ones that irritate you, can make total sense. Mm -hmm. And when you really understand somebody and their humanity, it's it's hard not to love them at least a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so then the second question is, or the second reflection, 
is being with you, I felt. So here's where you bring yourself into the mix. So the first one is I'm trying to get something about you. Now I'm sharing my, like the first one is my impressions of you, which we tend to hide. <laughs> we, we don't tell people our impressions of them, right? Because we're scared that we might hurt their feelings or we might hurt the relationship or something, or they, or maybe they'll think we're being too close too fast. You know, we got a million different reasons not to share stuff, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's, it's vulnerable. It's taking a risk. The other side of the risk is sharing myself, right. sharing like, right. wow, when here's my response to you, here's my reaction to you, here's how you're affecting me. Mm -hmm. And we usually hide that too. Mm -hmm. right? Because again, we don't know how the person is going to, going to react to hearing that. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it's really sharing how I'm being touched or moved by being with you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really impactful for people to hear one, because they don't often get to hear it. And in, in this type of situation, it's usually pretty good to hear it. It's usually some, some tender, you know, beautiful right. stuff, but right. even if it's, right. even if it's stuff that is hard to hear, right. You're doing it in some ways, we're doing each other a disservice by not sharing that because they never get to hear how they're affecting other people so they can make adjustments. Yeah. Right? And, and so there's can... another thing about listening here, which is, um, I mean, we said before that there's there's a way that you're trying to kind of quiet the voice in your head and not, you know, think of the next clever thing you want to say. But something that we've also talked a lot about in the training is that when I listen to you, I listen to your voice coming at me and I watch your expressions, but I listen inside my own body as well. So you might say something that makes me anxious and I notice space in my throat actually changes. And that prob probably not in the first 15 minutes, but you never know. But, but that is something that also you might bring into the conversation. People will say in a circle, I notice, you know, my hands are clenching or I notice I'm feeling hot or um, gosh, I'm getting a little teary. And again, like, I mean, I, I can even remember when I was new, I was like, this is weird, you know, but the more you do it, the more you kind of go, oh, I am not hiding things that I typically hide, you know, and, 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 and also because the context gives me permission to talk about it. Not only am I not hiding, I'm noticing more about myself than what I usually notice because my attention is is much broader. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to add that in. I mean, I think that's that's I, th I think a lot of us don't realize that our words set off sparks in the other person's body. Totally, yeah. totally. And I love that you brought in this the the, the somatics too. It's like yep. so in, yep. in in being with you, I feel you know you might. You might talk about, oh, I feel hearing or hearing you, I feel like listening to what you said. I feel happy. I feel excited. I feel I feel sad. I feel tender. I feel uh, annoyed or whatever it is. I feel nervous, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it could also be, you might not know what the emotion is right away, right? Because again, that is, our society doesn't always teach us <laughs> as kids to, to, to be naming our, and be mindful and aware of, of, of actually mm -hmm. what we're feeling. So, but but everybody understands sensation. So like you said, oh, my throat's getting tight or or my 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 breathing is constricted or what were the other, oh, you said I had tears in my eyes. But th these are also clues for ourselves and the other person as to, oh, what what actually might this be indicating to me that, that, that I'm feeling in response to you, right? So I have tears in my eyes. So I'm feeling really touched by what you shared or I'm feeling sad or, or it reminded me of something in my own life, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm feeling hot, you know, that could be a number of things. Like maybe I'm feeling just in, in intense, I'm feeling anxious, or I'm feeling scared, or I'm feeling angry or something, right? So it's it's always related to something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so what you're talking about now, um, some of this can happen in that first exercise, but I think we've also started talking about some of the deeper levels of the practice. So again, if we just use um you know, because we'll, we'll put the information, people should, if they get curious, they should check it out. It's every Thursday night, um, the drop-in class, the Circling Institute. But after this initial game, we go into what is called a circle. Um, typically, that's at least 40 minutes or so. It, you know, it kind of depends on the context of how much time you have, but it's a lengthier conversation. 
There is a facilitator who's leading the process. There's several participants. But as you mentioned earlier, it's still typically the attention is mainly on the experience of one person. But it's now like you have a, a group of people who are kind of sounding together or, or being this kind of a sounding board and reflecting. So, um, well, there, there's a lot of places we could go, but do you want to add anything just about um, describing a, a overall what a circle is like? Sure. So again, the, the, it, if you compare it to like the typical conversation among a group of people in the world, you, know, you, get, you, you know, you're sitting at a, at a, at a meal with, you know, five people or five friends, right. And, and the conversation is jumping around and, um, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, that the, maybe the person who's the most extroverted sort of gets to talk the most and they're telling stories and the other people are kind of listening, but, but how deep does it get? Right. And how, and when you come away, when people come away from that, how, how sort of nourished do they feel by it? Mm -hmm. And um, so in this type of a conversation, everybody's participating, but the topic is the person being circled. <laughs> <laughs> and we and we just agree that they're the topic. <laughs> and so exploring their world, what it's like to be them, their life, that's that's what we're talking about. And then, yeah, the facilitator might guide it because they have experience in sort of getting beneath the surface, but then everybody's invited in to share. And si similar, the things we're, we were just talking about, like what's it like to be with this person and revealing your, your impact and mm -hmm. how you're being touched. And... What are you getting about who they are? And now they're getting a lot of different perspectives, and 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 just to be really seen and attempt and understood and per perhaps even validated for who they are by multiple people in a group can be not just nourishing, but it can be incredibly healing, mm -hmm. because a lot of times <laughs> a lot of our wounds happen from from groups. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So that, that's the place to turn it around, but. But uh, yeah, the conversations are just can be just amazingly profound uh, mm -hmm. where, where we can get to. Yeah. Right. Well, so if you have a, a a pair of people who are basically getting curious about each other and they're sharing the experience, I'm telling you how uh, you know the impression you make on me as well as what I'm feeling. Uh, there's a couple words there that we could use to describe those experiences one is sovereignty and that's just again telling you what my experience is and also it's it's not doing certain things like it's not saying well you're wrong about that john and i'm going to tell you <laughs> the real way that things are even if i do disagree with you it's more like huh when you said that i noticed i was surprised because i always thought i i mean might you might reveal a disagreement but you don't you know you just I, I tell you how it is over here, and then you know what's going on with me. Uh, and then all those questions, you know, that I might just draw draw you out more, or or talk about what I'm noticing about you. Um, that's explorer. So it's like we're exploring together. And um, I'm starting to talk about, you know, what we we talk about in the training. Um, but what 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 made me think of moving from the the pair to the circle is when we were talking about um like the somatics or the different feelings that come up because sometimes what happens and this is another part of a circle is like the way people feel in the group is very different and we have dissonance and then someone actually says out loud well something's going on here and what is it and they, they kind of like call the question um and we call that warrior but um do you want to do and talk about that a little bit or yeah. Fill in any of the other gaps that I got to my left. <laughs> Can I, for your audience, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll reveal that um, you know you, Seth's in our in our level two training, which is our yeah. facilitator yeah. training, right? So he's learning to 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 guide this process and to in in some ways to to teach about it or lead about it. And so I'm loving just seeing you like sort of like oh yeah, you're, <laughs> it's just flowing out of you so easily now, like just. Yeah, I mean, well, and it's it's worth pausing there for a second because, like I said, I mean, I felt pretty awkward in the beginning with this stuff, but it's 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 another thing that I, I'm noticing it again, um, maybe just because the context, because I've talked to you so many times that we never done a podcast, and here we're talking about it, but like even that what we call warrior moment, 
happens all the time in normal conversation, except usually we sort of say, oh, I'm not going to say that. And then we just sort of, or, or we start a fight, you know, but there's an opportunity when, when things are really different between you and me, there's like, maybe the truth is somewhere in between, or who knows, you know, like one of us is missing something, maybe both of us are missing something, but then warrior like says, well, let's talk about it, you know? Well, let, me, let, me, let me come back and summarize a little bit what you shared with Safran and Explorer, because because now that you're jumping to sort of like circling itself mm -hmm. and going into like a deep, like the, actually like how the how-to of it. So like we hit that you were, you were referring to the first three stages of our seven stage model, right? So yeah, yeah. we call it the seven stages of circling or, or, or the, of the circling method. And um, so the first one is sovereign, which is that's your, your, yourself, your own voice, your own truth, your own, your own impact. In other words, how are you being affected? How are you responding to the, to the other person? So ident being able to identify that and actually articulate it, which is both knowing what it is, and being able to put it to words and to be have the the courage <laughs> um to to be able to share it mm -hmm. and and to be able to sort of own your own voice and your own truth mm -hmm. and so that's so that is the first stage because if, if you're not present and you're not at home it's it's hard to have any kind of depth with another human being because like you, you don't have it with yourself yet right so that's why that or that first stage is always always sovereign in our model and that's like the first part of our training. Like we have a whole weekend workshop devoted to exploring the levels of sovereign. And then you referred to Explorer, which is the second stage. And Explorer is, now I take the, the emphasis off of me because I'm present, I'm home, I'm ready. And now I can focus on you. And so Explorer is, is um, um, getting your world. Mm -hmm. Like I alluded to earlier. So what's what's it like to be you? And so I might be asking you questions. And then I might be asking you deepening questions, but I'm not just asking you questions. Because mm -hmm. if I just ask you questions, just like the exercise you did for our for our <laughs> our video on tools for external connection, right? You you're in that exercise where you right where you we practice. Right, John, long John asked me to be a really bad listener for one of the exercises. So I got to interrupt and <laughs> be an <laughs> asshole basically. <laughs> well, it's just asking question after question after question. And yeah. you know, even if you care about somebody, eventually they're gonna pull back from that. It's gonna like right. short circuit the connection right. versus deepen the connection because you're not putting any skin in the game. Like mm -hmm. so that's why you're not putting anything on your heart on the line. Right. So so when we weave in sharing how we're how we're touched our own impact with what we're getting about you it's like okay now i'm doing some work i'm, I'm taking some risks i'm you know I'm, I'm investing in that relationship i'm not just asking you questions and making you do all the heavy lifting yeah so so that's explorer where you share like what you're getting about them and their world and who they are and 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 constantly looking at at what's like what's underneath mm -hmm. like sort of getting to the getting to the most important thing going on for them and following where that goes mm -hmm. yeah. and then like you alluded to when 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 we do that and once we have that rapport which i think that was the thing in that in that to go back there one more time in the in the Thursday nights and the the drop in circling where you said like hey fifteen minutes and everyone's blown away by how quickly they got into a deep conversation with somebody they don't even know when sometimes they've had friends for years and they haven't had this level of depth in a while and partly it's the the intention to do that and it's also it's also the um, I just lost my train of thought for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. it's also like it's the questions it's the questions we're asking i'm trying to trace it back yeah well like, how do we form that rapport because as i was saying if 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 you you pause someone and say hey something feels a little off right here you have to they have to be willing to hear that as well yeah it's, the, it's the, like the rapport of of the willingness to share to share stuff that we don't usually share right yeah. to share the yeah. impact and to share what we're getting about somebody and to recognize, wow, this just put us into a deep rapport together. Mm -hmm. And it's like, 
holy cow, like I can do that. I can do that with another human being so fast if that's my intention, if we like actually set the agreement or set the context for that. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not hard to get there once you know the roadmap to it. Yeah, I, I would also add another thing that I think is happening. So I, it's it's good that we slowed down because I, I, I kind of eager, it would be fun if we talked through all the seven stages. We'll see if we actually have time to do that. But another thing I think that's unfolding is for the person being circled, and I know I had this experience, um, of course, as you know, I've been involved with the Feldenkrais method for a long time before I came to circling. And, you know, just speaking very generally, we could say body awareness, we could say, you know, posture and my breathing, those are things I'm used to paying attention to. But as I was being circled for the first time, um, I don't actually remember all the details, but I was I was getting more aware of myself by the way that people were listening to me and reflecting back. I mean, one of the simple things that happens in Explorer is someone says, man, I was, I was so mad. I could, I could have just smashed a wall or something. And then they, then they keep talking and, and, and the person will say, wait a minute. So you said you were so mad that you could have smashed your arm through the wall. And they just, it's kind of like, did you notice what you just said? Like often we don't even pay attention to our own words. So that's one of the things and so if I say something like that and I spit it out of my mouth, kind of not even realizing what I said, and you pause me and say, Seth, did I just hear you say that? It's like, now I have to slow down and say, I did say that. Wow, how did that come out of my mouth? And so I'm starting to notice I'm more angry than I realized or something like this. So that's, there's rapport, but there's also, you know, when a circle feels really connected, it's like, wow. Every minute of this conversation that goes by, I'm learning about myself. Yeah. I mean, you, you brought up a great point. It's like um, we say things sort of nonchalantly that reflect something pretty intense oftentimes going on with us, but we get so used to just covering it up because we find, because people find it so rare in life that people have the time or attention or the you know, or the desire to like listen to like the hardest stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which sometimes takes a while to get to. Like it takes somebody like really asking and really exploring and really demonstrating that they really want to know. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're so used to just not sharing it that we almost forget how it's how it's affecting us. We kind of have layers of covering ourselves up. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody starts to notice, well, wait a second, you know, you're pretty nonchalant about that, but that sounded pretty big. And the way you're kind of describing how it's related to your life, that sounds pretty big too. Like what's like what is, what's it like to hear that? Or what's it like to actually stop for a moment and feel like what what is that like for you? Right. So that's that's what you're pointing to before is like warrior. Like, oh, wait a second. We let's something seems important here that we seem to be glossing over mm -hmm. or we seem to be going right by, mm -hmm. right? So warrior is like the subheading for warrior is, is seeing what hasn't been seen. Mm -hmm. So it's like, maybe they haven't quite seen the effect of something going on for them and how, how deep it goes. And so now we're slowing down and it's not like warrior. Like most people think of warrior, they think of a battle. But it's like, it's not like I'm a warrior towards you. It's like, I'm a warrior right next to you on your side. Right, right. But a warrior is more like, wait a second, let me, let's, like the warrior is a, is a deep, deep care. Mm -hmm. right? so mm -hmm. Like you got me, like maybe that stuff, maybe that, that stuff just, maybe there was a, a, a deep hurt there or a deep challenge or something that's been, that's been too hard to face alone. Right. So they so they stopped even looking. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and then we develop all these and all these coping mechanisms for, for stuff that we don't want to face. Right. And and we avoid it. Right. Like you said, the person might actually push you away or get angry. No, I don't want to talk about that or something. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this, so the warrior is like, wait a second, I think there's something really important for you underneath all that something mm -hmm. you really care about that has been hard to face. And so the warrior said, says in a way, 
without so many words. It's like, I'm willing to be there in there with you and, and discover what that is. And if it's hard to face alone, I'm willing to get in the mud there with you and 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 face it with you. Right. So now it's a little bit safer. Now somebody really cares and they're really asking about it. Mm -hmm. And and they and and not just asking about it from a distance, but really getting in there, willing to feel the repercussions of 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 what it all means to them and what it means to their life. Mm -hmm. And now it's a whole level of 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 safety to to actually turn and face something that maybe they've been running from. Yeah. Right. Well, and it's 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 I keep coming back to this theme in my head about how is this just sort of a natural progression. It's natural in so much as we're naming things we don't normally name, but it is striking that if you go, you know, to Thursday night, week after week, it it if people are really listening, there tends to be that moment where the person just, as they're telling the story, there's something in the story that they didn't see. And if everyone's just really listening and holding the space, that can happen. And as you said, you know, a lot of us will sort of the first time we get a clue about it. We we go back to our familiar ex explanations. Um, there's even the phrase around training uh, how to be a warrior. We say we seal the exits, <laughs> like we, in a friendly way. We seal the exits. So we're going to stick with this topic. Like sometimes a facilitator will say, "Yeah, but I'm, I'm still interested in that thing you said, you know, a minute ago. Can we go back to that?" But just um, so so I understand, I'm sort of motoring us through. But let's say the person says, well, all right, okay, I will look at this thing that I normally don't look at. So then then what might happen from there? And that brings us to now now there's like like you said, agreement, like, yeah, let's go into that. Let's 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 stop the all the the the, the breadth of the conversation and go more into the depth of the conversation let's follow that thread down and see where it goes okay i'm willing to sit with it i'm willing to look at it i'm willing to explore it i'm willing to feel it and um so that usually leads to the next stage of, of the circling model which is called deep sea diver mm -hmm. and, and again these aren't like like guy senstock who who sort of created the you know the the the, the idea of circling and 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 the and the seven stage model and the circling method and all that. It's not like he said, oh, here, here's a model for how do you create intimacy? Because I think this is going to work. It was like, oh, this is what seems to happen in the richest, most incredible conversations. And it was right. sort of took a while to kind of map it out. Right. So this tends to be the phase like, oh, so when you notice it's there, instead of getting there by accident, you can go, oh, well, this seems to be the the place that it more naturally goes. So I'm in this in this phrase freight this um <laughs> this phase then here's like the capacities i know that are going to make more sense to allow this phase to blossom mm -hmm. and here's the skills that are going to more likely help this develop and and and, and give it the the room to breathe right? right and so so in in deep sea diver we're getting we're slowing down a little bit uh because there might be there might be tender feelings or there might be there might be feelings of joy and ecstasy but they but that also for some reason have been hard to get to right but they've right. been covered up for some reason maybe there hasn't been permission for various reasons but quite often it's an old wound or something like that mm -hmm. which we all have mm -hmm. <laughs> we all have that baggage in, in some respect right so then getting in there and slowing down and saying yeah what's what's it like to what's it like to pay attention to that now or what's it like to feel that now and and let's like let's let's be in it together let's see what it's like let's let's imagine like so even as the participants were in the circlers we're feeling into what 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 do we imagine it's like being in that person's that particular reality that we're just describing right you know and not only what does it feel like, but what other feelings are there? What does it what mean? How, what does it mean to their life? What are the repercussions of it? What what's been the struggles around that? Mm -hmm. Why has it been so hard? Maybe and just identifying you know all that and letting them really like spread spread themselves into that instead of hiding away from it. Right. Yeah. A, a little detour away from the stages, but you just mentioned um, the participants in the circle, and I, I said before, you know. 
this isn't just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And so, yeah, by the time we get to this place of the deep sea diver, there is a sense that everyone here is doing this. But of course, the participants might jump in early on when you know the circle begins. Maybe someone has a difficulty in their relationship or at their job, or they just got some, you know, information about a family member that like kind of made something that they didn't understand for years and years. Now they get it and like the world just looks different. They're trying to process it. And so the participants might raise their hand and they might do things we've talked about. They might share impact or they might simply ask questions. But there is this participation by everyone in the group. And um, it just strikes me that, you know, if you were in a deep sea diver, at this point, it, it might be this other person's story. And again, someone I, I've never met. But what they are doing in front of my eyes is, is like <laughs> they are like unlocking a piece of their life. So it can be profoundly touching and moving and, you know, generate insights, even for the person who isn't, so to say, at the center of the circle. Oh, yeah. It's 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 incredible when you know it's I, I think when a when a human being is is really open and really shares their heart, you feel that there's a there's a transference of emotion. That's why like the most powerful speakers in the world, you know, they they speak from emotion, right? You know, I mean, you, you listen to a you know an old Martin Luther King speech, and you you can't not be touched because it's so powerful. What you feel the raw emotion, and you feel. You feel the both the pain and the yearning in there. And so so that's why like that agreement, like to really listen to each other's humanity is so important because then we're we're connecting at the deepest level of humanity and it and it touches us. And because we might not have that same experience, but we've all experienced hurt. We've all experienced heartbreak. We've right. all experienced right. resilience and joy and overcoming things. Right. right. So we, so right. we know what it's like, but to be so to be in another person's journey, and and to and to really see all that and to be and to be supporting all that, it, it, to me it's a it's a it's a thing of beauty, mm -hmm. and it's 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 and it's it's sacred. It's like sacred territory. Right. So to, to have some sharing like the the most raw thing that's mm -hmm. going on for them. Right. It, right. It's, it, it's so touching. Yeah. yeah. And Just, so yeah, like you said, like you said, we come away and we're different. It's like in some way, like I look at it in some way, I've been like my experience. Uh, if I'm so deeply in someone else's experience that I can imagine what it's like to be them, I can feel what it's like to be them. I've just like added to my own experience without actually having to go through that in my own life, without having to go through all those circumstances. I've just mm -hmm. felt into like, what's that like? So this, this like more consciousness and more awareness and more like more of my experience of life that I'm now carrying in a way and now I'm aware of. Right. And it also strikes me that what's really um, profound is we may have that person in our life who we have these kinds of conversations with. But like you said, when it's a group of five of us, it usually doesn't happen. And so to have that experience in a group where everyone is really holding something that's really tender or difficult or or challenging or whatever it is, and then the whole group comes through, there's a sense that, you know, we, we always have that little debrief after the circle, but but everyone, everyone, I mean, it, it builds a community of a different kind as well. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It's build, it builds a community of a different kind because it, it's... Um... It's like it's teaching us all a whole new way of being, mm -hmm. being like sort of within ourselves, or a whole new place from which to come from, and a whole new way of being with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's like a it's like a a joint care. It's like a communal care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like everybody's focus is on that person, and and like. And and sometimes, sometimes maybe just the facilitator is 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 talking for an extended period of time with that person because maybe they're in just a really deep place and and there's a really mm -hmm. unique connection happening that's important and everybody's just like their presence is palpable even though they're not saying anything 
And then when they do speak, it's really potent. And other times, the whole circle is, is just everybody contributing. And it almost doesn't matter who speaks because everyone's on the same wavelength and they're all tuned into what's happening for that person. And so they're getting it from multiple perspectives. And just like any conversation, it can happen in, and it can differ any, at any, any time and in any group of people. But the difference is the intent. The difference is the the profound right. desire to really empathize and care for that person and to share ourselves as well as well. Right. And not just not just to tell stories or to have the center of attention or or something like that. Right. And if people listening are wondering, does every single circle lead to like this massive like shift? Not necessarily, but I think I think it's fair to say that we always assume. Like you said at the beginning, the topic is the person. So if I tell you, John, I'm, you know, kind of having this difficulty with my friend. The difficulty with the friend is just the starting point. But again, it's 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 who is this person talking? What's it really like to live inside their skin? Um, and so that's always the intent. And, you know, to the degree where, you know, someone says something that breaks the connection or you know, they feel uncomfortable. This is why it's a practice. This is why we have a training program. This is why there's a, a class every Thursday night. But I think, you know, what, what's also interesting as we go along, we also notice, oh, what was the thing I said that kind of, you know, killed the moment? <laughs> you know, we, we, we learned that too, you know, but um, anyways, it just, well, let, let's although see if you I, want to respond although, to that. Yeah. Although I would say, I would, I would, um, I would maybe tweak the word killed because <laughs> it, it might have it might have maybe short circuited the connection, but in this way of relating, we like it's so easy when when we're when our intention is pure like this, it's so easy to take responsibility for doing instant repairs. So it's like, right. oh, right. I just missed that, didn't I? Like I right. was completely off base, wasn't I? Yeah. Like so, this is what it's like. So tell me. So correct me. Right. And then and then you and then you maybe you paraphrase what you heard. It's like, oh, so this is what it's actually like for you and not that. And then right. it's like, oh, now we're right back in tune again. Right. Yeah. Right. And oftentimes we don't, don't that's that's the thing about the reflections, about you know, sharing our impact, giving and giving our impressions of each other. We usually hide those. And then we walk away from a conversation and we have to make it up. We mm -hmm. have to fill in the blanks on our own. Right. right? And I, I always like to say, because this is so true, like. I don't know about you, but the shit I make up is usually way worse than the truth. <laughs> right, right. Right. And now yeah. like I'm I'm feeling bad and I might be even in an argument with this person in my head or something. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that no, actually they they really looked at it a completely different way and they and they understood and this and that. But you just right. Don't know so it's it. like if you're you skillful, there's almost no situation that we couldn't kind of relate to in a in a really real way if 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 we're willing to be that vulnerable i mean of course that's the other part of the practice is it's like um I, I know something that i learned uh in the training process what will often happen is 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 the coach will give the feedback to the person that led the circle and they'll say you know i was thinking at this one point i was thinking you know something like what happened to the person i was talking to it, it happened to me and i remember when that happened the way i felt and then the coach will say why didn't you say that during the circle? <laughs> and it's like, oh, you mean I could have said it? It's like, yep, that that's what we're doing. We're learning how to say the things that we feel. And it's like, it, it seems so basic, but it really takes practice. Um, you know, and then I think I would say, you know. It's, it, what you said there is really important to highlight. Like yeah. It, it takes practice to be authentic because we've taught, we've been, we've learned the hard way that quite often the safest route is to hide parts of ourself. Right. Because right. oftentimes we've shared things and it didn't go well. You know, yeah. we got we got yeah. sort of like punished in, in some way for it, you know. Right. Maybe well, and we not to mention that authenticity these days has become a buzzword in different ways and it can be more authentic than thou kind of thing. <laughs> so like right. what does it actually right. mean? It's like you kind of have to hang out and and have some consistency. It's not just like you share one thing that no one expected one time or it's kind of like authentic authenticity mixed with mindfulness 
mindfulness mixed with compassion, mixed with empathy. <laughs> Right, right. It takes longer to say. Okay. Well, so we were we sort actually, of traveling. We have to give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> so we're traveling through this circle. We're, we're, we're getting connected. We kind of noticed this moment of like, huh, let's take a closer look. That was the warrior. We start going in and we, we discover there's some sort of like buried feelings, as you said, often like maybe from early life or just something that we've never admitted to ourselves. And because we've never admitted, we've never fully felt it. And now, you know, in the circle, we're kind of invited to do that. There might be tears, there might, that can happen, or it might just be like a long silence uh, can often happen, or people are just very still. And like we mentioned the field, I mean, it, you can feel something in the stillness. It's not the awkward silence or the dead silence. It could be a very pregnant silence. But then if you spend time, and actually feel that thing you haven't been feeling for for who knows how long, but then then that too can sort of progress to another stage where we feel something that whatever else it is, it's generally something new because we've passed through um, an experience that we've always sort of stopped short of. So that's the next stage. I'm queuing you up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think now I'm interviewing you, and so so tell me about the next stage of circle. <laughs> oh, you mean midwife? <laughs> yeah. Right. So so you touched on the, uh, the first of all the subheading for um, the the phase before that, which we call the getting into the into the depths of what's going on and and feeling the feelings there, and that's we call that deep sea diver, and we and the subheading for that is feeling what hasn't been felt. Mm -hmm. So now, as you described, we're in there, we're all feeling that together, we're all facing what, what it meant to them, what it means to their life, what the repercussions have been, what the challenges have been, like what, like what's the effect on them, you know, and, and they're allowing themselves to feel it, not so that they can suffer, but so that they can actually face it and, and, and move through it rather than constantly avoiding it in their life, so that it's still always there. And, and it's right. like they're in, in some ways they're oh they've been always suffering for that because they because they haven't been able to deal with it so now it's become this 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 thing that they're just carrying but can't it's like no longer in a way a part of them because they haven't they haven't faced it or they haven't given it any any attention at all so now they're finally with it and even though it might be hard like you said it might might produce emotions might even produce tears but there's a there's a level of there's a level of of no matter how bad it's been, it feels good to have to be able to finally share it and to be have right. people finally right. understand. Because usually in those types of experiences in our life, we have we've had to deal with the effects of them alone, oftentimes. And and so now people are not just listening, but they're empathizing, they're getting in there with us. And it's like most people have never experienced quite that level of of empathy before and mm -hmm. so that alone is so nourishing that even in the tears it feels good having people there with you mm -hmm. but something about facing it eventually it's just people naturally evolve when they're given the right circumstances or they create the right circumstances for themselves so so oftentimes maybe later but quite often it happens, even in the circle itself, even in that half hour, that hour that we're together, they find some little light, some little way through. Mm -hmm. And and they get through that and there's, and all of a sudden there's a new sense of possibility. It's like, oh, I've been running from this thing and actually it's not gonna consume me. Like I can be with, be with this and not get lost. I can see what's on the other side of this. And now a whole new a whole new way of being or or a whole new set of possibilities is born. And so that's the phase you were just offering up next, which was which is called um, midwife. And midwife, the subtext or the subheading for that is the birth of something new. Right. Right. And in, and in this in this place, we we get really gentle mm -hmm. with what's going on. And we and we really hold it with care. 
just like we would if a newborn is 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 being born, a baby's being born. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's been hard. It's been hard to work through that for them. And now whatever is arising doesn't quite have its roots yet. So and it and it could easily kind of shut down. So we're like we're we're holding it with care. We're asking about it. We're we're making sense of it of what's new for them. We're 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 exploring that. Now that becomes the new exploration. And, right. And Guy Guy often talks about how um well he one of his phrases that 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 he he uses in explaining what happens in circling is he talks about something called the occurring view. And in a sense, people might just substitute the more common phrase, your worldview, right? But I'm looking out of eyes that have lived this life, right? And I've understood that my life is a certain way because of A, B, and C. Like, that's how I explain it. It's, you know, what happened when I was a kid and that person, you know, my girlfriend had dumped me that one time in that awful way, <laughs> you know, and that I can never trust, you know, these situations, whatever it is. And even when I just, you know, meet someone and say, hi, how are you doing? There's there's this whole like way I see the world that's just baked into that. And then when we get in a circle to the midwife, and like you say, there's something really new. And it's and it's even like when I look out of my eyes, I see something different that I hadn't seen before, or or it's not even so much that I hadn't seen before. It's like, I'm seeing the same world, but it's like, I've adjusted the focus. And it's not just in my eyes. It's, it's maybe in my heart or in my brain or, or in my whole being. But I think, I think that's um, like, like what you say about it's really tender. Like there's, there's, there's a kind of a disorientation that's still there when we've passed through I, this. I think a couple of things that maybe could happen or even both could happen many things of course but the one you're describing i think is is almost like we we see we see the perspective that we've been seeing through so now we're actually instead of seeing through that perspective and life just looks that way now we go oh this is how i've been looking at things and now this becomes the thing we're seeing right oh, i've been looking at things through these colored glasses and now I can see the glasses, so I have a wider perspective. And that gives me a whole new level of choice, maybe a whole new level of freedom. But also there's something in 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 getting through that stuff, like from deep sea diver, getting through that level of, of feeling what hasn't been felt and, and working your way through that and facing it. Something new is reborn and is being born. And oftentimes it's not so much born, but I call it I, I use that, you know, the, the the in a way the the Christian phrase that we've co-opted, right, is reborn. In some ways, the, a part of ourselves is reborn because whatever like wound we were avoiding, facing, and from feeling from from maybe years ago or decades ago, or whatever, it's off. It's usually also cut off a part of ourselves. Maybe it's cut off a sense of our own trust in the world or a sense of our own innocence or, or a sense of our own love for ourselves, or self-esteem or safety or whatever, whatever it affected, whatever, maybe depending on what like the wound was or the hurt was. And so now we reconnect in a way with that lost part of ourselves. So in some ways, it's a, it's a healing both from both from the top and, and from the bottom. It's like the perspective shifts and becomes wider. And, and freer and we have this connection with a lost part of our own being a lost part of our own consciousness our own essence mm -hmm. and out so there's a there's a sense of wholeness that that starts to happen or more of a sense of wholeness from that that type of shift right and that's right. just a beautiful such a touching thing to be part of mm. yeah. yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so so it's a it's there's an internal change and then there's also i guess what i was trying to highlight and and i'm glad you filled that those other pieces in but it, it's like the world i see because i'm different the world actually appears it's like if i was watching a movie now i'm watching a slightly different movie or <laughs> at least it's a 
you know, a different soundtrack on the movie, which changes the quality of, you know, the events that I'm seeing it might be the same events, but I just have a new relationship to the world in a sense. Yeah, totally. And, and I think, funny, as I was listening to you, I was hearing in a way you describing what happens like for you as, as a circle E, the person ha having the attention, but I think it also happens to the circlers and the participants, right? right. Because you can't, right. what, you can't be with somebody in that deep a level of, of reality without being touched. You know, I, the way I look at it is in a way like our, our, our human systems, our energy systems, whatever you want to call them, they, they, they have a frequency, they have a vibration. And so it's like if you have a tuning fork and you hit it, and then you have a tuning fork on the shelf, it's eventually going to be vibrating in a similar vibration. So when somebody's going through something that, that meaningful, then like, and, and we're in it with them fully like that, any any experience that has any type of resonance or any type of similarity for us is going to be vibrating along right. with them. Right. Right? right. So as they go through whatever they're getting from that, whatever level of transformation or healing or whatever you want to call it, even though that's not the goal, right? The goal, and that's the important thing to also to reference in, in circling. It's like this is not a therapy session. It's just like being with people. For the from for the purpose of of really getting to know them at the core of who they are and for deep right. intimacy. But if you're really wanting to know somebody in their depths, then of course you're going to hit all the blocks that they that they have to themselves in their own life, right? Yeah. That's yeah. just an important part of the human journey, right? So yeah. if we're willing to get into that the depth of that journey together, it's natural that we're going to come against the, those old hurts or the old pains or the old desires that haven't been fulfilled or whatever right right so in watching somebody else work through that and heal that it's a whole new level of possibility that we receive for ourselves too so there's a there's a right uh, there's a nourishment that happens for everybody in that there's a nourishment that happens just heart to heart just from being in the truth of who we are but also just seeing something new emerge like it, we can start to feel the possibility of ourselves in our own lives something emerging mm -hmm. yeah. yeah what occurred to me too just now is like before i was joking about you know cliched use of the word authenticity you said well also don't forget mindfulness somatics compassion right but when i'm in a circle you know and then if i continue the practice and i see people reveal what's under the blocks many many times I think I do start to look at people walking down the street a little differently. I, 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 I don't see into their depths necessarily, but I certainly imagine their depths much more easily. And I, I sort of just have an appreciation for the potential depths of each person I meet um, that I think is really different. I'm, and I'm speaking from my own experience now than, than just a couple of years ago, just by being in these circles, you know, again and again, I might have a short interaction with someone where we're not going to do everything we do in a circle, but I'm just sort of imagining, huh, something just happened there and I don't know what it was and maybe I'm not going to have time to find out. But like, you know, you, you just start to listen in that different way for that kind of resonance that you were talking about. Yeah, and I find that it's a little bit easier. Each, each time we've had experiences like that, it makes it a little bit easier for me to have understanding for people, have right. have compassion for people. If, even when I feel, even at times I feel annoyed or something like that, or it's right. less than perfect. And it, it right. reminds me of, of my favorite, one of my favorite sets of lines from uh, that old spiritual text, uh, A Course of Miracles. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it says, um, they say every communication is either an expression of love or a cry for help. And I thought, you know, that that could be true. It might not be. I mean, you could argue with it. But if we acted as if that were true, it just seems to always lead to more compassion yeah. and to more understanding. Yeah. 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 It's like it's like underneath every way of being, there's there's a desire to fulfill deep human needs. 
Right. Right. So if I can if I can tap into what those are, now I can have have more compassion for whatever the behavior is that's that's showing up to, to that, that's that's just that's the only way they've they've learned that they can maybe get those needs fulfilled. So if we can get to the needs and just be with them, maybe new new and and then also be honest about impact and what's happening and you know it might take time like you have to get rapport right <laughs> you have to really right. listen and let the person trust you because they know you're actually there to listen and not to tell them what they're doing wrong right right, right. <laughs> then we can but then in sharing impact well, wow because when you said that earlier i noticed i i, I felt hurt because i was thinking you meant this blah 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 and then they get they get they, they receive um feedback on their way of being and they and and but yet the person is there caring about them and loving them wanting to be with them and they go oh maybe there's maybe there's other ways to get my needs filled and you know maybe you know so maybe this has just been a coping mechanism you know i've been i've been fighting off everybody because i've been thinking they're going to hurt me or something like that and yeah. you know and then i don't notice the people who want to love me and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there's an opening right yeah well as we're tracking the stages we're sort of getting <laughs> excuse me we're getting towards the end of the circle right and we've we've kind of had this experience of something opening up and we passed through and we're seeing something new. But what you were just talking about in the experience of the circle, what's also interesting is we start at the surface, right? What's going on? And someone tells a story. And then after we've been through something like this, sometimes what also happens is we remember the thing that they said at the very beginning. And it's like, that's really interesting. So something I, I was circled recently, and I've, I've already posted on Facebook about this, so it's not a secret, so I'll say a little bit, but um, I was being circled, and, and what sometimes, not always, but often happens in the beginning of the circle is people will share, being with you, I feel, and they might do it before you've really shared anything, but they're just sort of tuning into you, um, but I was being circled by some people who know me pretty well, and, you know, so they're drawing on, and someone said something to me, it was just really sweet. It just like kind of touched me. I wasn't expecting it. And so I just closed my eyes and like kind of took it in like that. And then I had this memory of being on a subway train two decades ago when there was this woman who was this beautiful young African-American woman in Harlem and like, you know, no, nothing like the girls I had a crush on in high school. And I was super lonely and she was looking at me like, you know, she was enjoying looking at me and I looking back at her and there was this little, you know, thing going on. Tragically, I just got off at the stop and I thought she's probably getting off at that stop too. And she wasn't. So the awkwardness was oh. there, right? <laughs> so, oh, ouch. But I know it's like, oh, what? And, 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 and for the longest time I did that. But the thing was, so, so we had a conversation um, in that circle uh, so so I revealed what had happened. I said, you know, you said that to me. And then I closed my eyes and then I remembered this experience. But we didn't talk about that experience for the whole circle. I kind of had current stuff I wanted to talk about. Um, basically had to do with doing the work I'm doing in the world. Like even like that moment at the beginning of our podcast today when I kind of got flustered, like, oh, here I am with John and people are watching, you know, like going out in the world and how are people going to receive me? But what happened, so, so there's this sort of question of like, can I do my work in the world? Can I just go out and, you know, be confident? And, but when we explored this, this memory, it was this time where I really felt lonely. I didn't feel lovable. And this person gave me this sort of like different, it, 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 in a funny kind of way, it was like a warrior moment in life or a, I don't know. There, there's some there's some there's some resonance with what we're talking about and circling even though you know um i stood up and 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 like i was like oh she's not getting up and so i said bye <laughs> and she says bye and i was like okay <laughs> you know but but the whole thing what was it was it like fear of rejection or just the assumption that she oh yeah i mean she was from a totally <laughs> different world than me i was gonna have to like not get off at my stop and just like go sit with her like just asking a girl for her number was like never something i was good at like all of that was in there you know um but what was so cool is 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 in this circle i'm, I'm trying to like 
make it correspond to what we've been talking about for the last hour. What also happened is the group of people were circling me about, Seth, what's going on in your life today? And I was sort of talking about, you know, as I said, just doing my work in the world and owning what I'm doing and, you know, not being apologetic about it. And what I realized happened back in that time was I, I because I didn't feel lovable because I felt lonely. It's like that thing I said about the occurring view. I just assumed people coming towards me wouldn't, you know, be interested or, or, or care about me or whatever until this woman did exactly the opposite of what I expect. Right. And so I had this deep, like what I remember doing is I, I couldn't uh, get up the courage to go, go over and talk to her, but I think we had like five stops. That was like this love affair, you know, at least the way I experienced it. And part of what I did is I couldn't keep looking at her all the time, but I would close my eyes. And when I closed my eyes, it was the feeling of there's someone over there loving me. They're right mm -hmm. there and they love me and it's okay. And I've been waiting for this. And I just, but then by reliving this memory, right in the circle, it was like all the somatics, like everything that happened in my body back then, it was like happening again, or at least I was imagining that, you know, and so it, it, it like came to life and it was just, it, it was amazing, but 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 the person who was circling was like, oh, now I get why you mentioned that, you know, the beginning of our circle 45 minutes ago, because then we talked about all these other things when we came back. So it was just kind of a. Because now in your life and in your business, you're developing the same courage to put yourself out there and to that assume kind of that you, the world is going to is going to love you back right, right. for the love you're putting out there. And and so. So you just kind of, it's almost like you're weaving back to that, that one place and, and, and in a way, like healing that memory to some right. degree so that you right. can, so that you can really have your courage now. Right. Yeah. And I was noticing you, you were like, I know I'm a podcast guest right now, but I'm kind of wanting to circle Seth. You were like, you were pausing me. You were, you were trying to get, what was it? <laughs> can, can I do it for another 30 seconds? Yeah, totally. <laughs> So what would so I imagine like you're 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 bringing this up. Well, first I'll I'll be the guest. So I imagine you're bringing this up to to go into the sixth stage of circling with yeah. which is integrator, which is probably what they did for you in that circle is integrate mm -hmm. what's happening in your life with 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 what you brought up in the beginning of the circle with that story and and all and sort of like how does your future look different and all that. But before we continue down <laughs> that integrator route, I'm wondering like so. Two things. One is, do you feel like? How do you feel like now that you're developing that those that courage and those skills and that confidence and that that yes, if I put out the things that I'm passionate about and I love, like the world is going to meet me. The world mm -hmm. is going to care. Right? right. How's that showing up for you? Yeah. Well, you said it really well. Like the world is going to meet me. And like in the past, that would have been something like an, it would just be like, oh, fake it till you make it. Like, I don't believe that. I can say that. But it's like to say that and you don't feel like you're faking it. You actually, you know, you feel it. You feel the world coming to meet you. And so practically speaking, I think there's just like less hesitation, right? It's like, or, or less, um, you know, covering it over. You know, so we, I think that like we've been talking about the things we say or don't say, but there's another thing we often do is we say the thing we mean, but we kind of like water it down, <laughs> you know? So I think, I think I have more sense of just like, just show up. It, it doesn't mean I think everyone's going to love me. I'm sure there's, there's plenty of people who are turned off the podcast. They're not even listening it anymore because of something I said, but you know, it's, it's to assume that someone is going to listen this far. Someone, someone is here. And so I don't have to construct what I think they want to hear. I'm just going to go ahead with who I am and assume that, you know, that is going to land for a lot of people. And in fact, if I if I really do it, what what maybe they didn't want was the watered down version, right? Yeah, they want all of you. Right, right. I notice I, I feel like I just take a really deep breath. I exhaled. I, I noticed my whole body relaxed mm -hmm. and I'm just... One, I just, I feel happy for you. I feel in some, in some respects, I feel like proud of you. Cause I know that you, you know, even as, 
even as recent as a year ago, this was a, that was a big struggle for you, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's mm -hmm. like I'm hearing, oh, there's almost like this level of ease mm -hmm. that I can have in the world with with being myself. And 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 not yeah, not being afraid, and 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 not as, like assuming the best, not assuming the worst. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And and that and that you can you can you can reveal you what what you have to offer. You can reveal your gifts as well as just reveal yourself and reveal your heart. Yeah. yeah nice. No, it's it's it's. I mean, because we are doing this kind of double thing and we're on this podcast, but but I also want to say, I mean, what's really clear because I'm talking to you and you've taught me so many of these skills is it's just another moment for me to, you know, download, but really feel it in my body, what's changed through this practice. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you had had all, like what you have now, mm -hmm. if, if you were so, some, somehow able to magically bring that back to the Seth on that train, <laughs> what, what, would you, what would you have done? Well, I wouldn't then? have got off at 125th Street. <laughs> I mean, I think, I mean, I want to talk to her, right? But but what's what's so clear is like she was ready for me to talk to her, right? And it's 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 kind of amazing to me now that I didn't, right? She was sitting there basically glowing and like right. without words, giving every kind of non-verbal signal, like, hey, <laughs> you know, let's talk. So I I don't know where it would go, but I mean. I think there was a lot of energy. There was, there was, you know, I mean, people talk about love at first sight. And I, I feel like we kind of had that. We could have gone somewhere and discovered two weeks later that like, there's a bunch of stuff about each other <laughs> that wasn't revealed in the subway train. But I, I think, yeah, I think I might've had a relationship with someone who really, like I said, was from a totally different world than me. And it would have just like, who knows, but huge horizons that I never, you know, knew about so probably would have opened up you would have, so you would have actually approached her you would have actually talked to her and it sounds like there was a from the quality of how of her interaction and her continued gaze towards you and loving gaze towards you that probably you would have had some sort of deep connection some sort of perhaps even relationship and who knows where that might have led to right right what what's it like just to feel like that imagination and feel that that shift in your consciousness that kind of goes all the way back in time and back forward again right right well i i think so what's it like to go all the way back and come forward i mean one of the things that i noticed because i mean that story and other what if stories in my life i have reviewed but i tend to kick myself while i review them yeah. what, what i notice now is i can just tell you the story and kind of laugh about it and say is life crazy? You know, so there's this softness that I didn't used to have, this ability to kind of look at myself, you know, and I've, I think if, if, well, I was about to say if that happened again, and I made the same mistake again, would I, I, I don't know, but that, that I, I, I don't think I would have the same, like, I've, I've, I've had experiences, not exactly like that. But again, since circling that weren't, uh, Thursday night class, but I just talked to someone and just reflect something that I'm noticing, you know, so, and, 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 and something really cracks open unexpectedly, you know, I, I imagine I would have a hard time imagining that in a similar situation that you would, that you would do the same thing. It seems to me like, right. Like that's, that's the warrior in you that, that seems to have developed too. It's like recognizing, wait a second. This is a profound moment of, of choice. I can either look away and not and, and not face it or run, or I can lean in. Right. And it seems like you have so much practice now with those moments of like, oh, wait a second. Nope. Pause. What's that? Like, let's lean in. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you doing anything differently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so fun to get circled by you on the podcast. <laughs> 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 How is it to hear me say that as the final wrap up for this? Because that was my impression. What is that? Is, is that true, or is it something different for you? Is there a nuance in there? 
Well, so if if I could could be really real, I think I think my podcast brain came in and I got a little flustered. I was like, well, where are we going to go from here? <laughs> and maybe what I was doing was running away from the deep truth you're trying to get me. Yeah, looking. Got, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. I'm 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 holding the interview now. So you're, 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 totally switched. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to good good to talk with you on a on a on a. Um, deeper level even even in the middle of a, like a, a right quote, well business I mean, thing. it occurred to me maybe with my 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 brain about trying to produce a podcast um but but really that like there's a way that everything we've been talking about could feel a little abstract if you've never been you know in a circle and again we'll put the information i hope people watching will you know check it out one of these coming thursday nights but um but yeah, I mean, I think anyone who's who's followed us along can feel how the last 15 minutes has been different because we've really been kind of like digging in. And what's new for me is to do this well. <laughs> I imagine a bunch of people watching who I can't see. So that's a little new for me. <laughs> you were about to describe before this all started was integration. Right. You sort of you sort of take everything that's that's that we've come through. Mm -hmm. Like both from the beginning in a circle and from what they described and what's going on with them or in their life and everything we covered and everything that was that we worked through in Deep Sea Diver and what was what was born again in, in, in midwife. And then so that sense of possibility so that so that it's not just like a fleeting moment, but mm -hmm. actually has meaning for their life. It's so integration is like, OK, what's what do you, how, how do you see this? affecting you like what like what what is possible now like what's mm -hmm. and if you weave it back to whatever in your life or with your job or your podcast or your or your feldenkrais mm -hmm. like so what's what's this going to mean now to how to how you show up for your life right and then so then you they start to articulate how this change is going to look going forward right um and and so for me i i just noticed like i still had so much curiosity about that young seth because i had the sense right you do look back and kind of kick yourself versus right. like oh let's like oh let's like imagine going back and relive it and just kind of have the different juicy possibility come and like kind of live that forward and even though it's kind of a playful exercise but there's something about it that for me I, it's like oh well maybe then the next time those things do happen you have the sense of oh i've kind of like i've kind of like rehearsed this in my mind or in my soul or in my being like i know this possibility right? right and i don't know it's just so well, i think I what you said a couple minutes ago about like you're in a in the moment and you have choice like you understand you could lean in or not and i guess where i sort of paused is like i probably won't always lean in in every moment but even just to sort of see that right it's something that did occur to me actually earlier today because i've been uh people who watch this channel will know I've been talking a lot and I've been reading and thinking about the the inner critic. And that's kind of like what we're talking about, like the person, you know, how you kick yourself for something that happened 20 years ago. It's like, let it go. No, you can't. There's that voice in your head. Uh, but what I noticed today was in some of the situations I'm in, the inner critic voice might come in, but it's like, oh, I, I know what that voice is. And by identifying it, I can have another voice. And then I started noticing that there was actually another voice. And I didn't know what it was. I just sort of said, well, what is that? I'll call it like the voice of love or something. But to be in a situation, and it's usually like the old voice that says, well, that's what you always do because you're a such and such, you know, versus I, I've noticed there's this new voice that's like, well, what if we, what if we just take another minute to really think about this or whatever. And it's just, it kind of is like that voice that we're, we're cultivating and circling. Yeah. That's, that's what I was, that's why I stopped there and kind of went back because I noticed there was something along the lines of what you're, I mean, obviously in a circle, I would have taken a lot more time to do that, Yeah, yeah. but, it, but it was, but I just noticed I had, I had, my interest was there with you. Right. And so that, so I, so I think what, what we demonstrated there is like, we went back, even though we were at the edge of integration, 
we still noticed something else that might be important. So we, I went back and did some warrior. It's like, oh, wait a second, that seems to matter too. At least I can't get my attention off of that little boy, right? Or that young man, right? Right. And and so we so we kind of went back, and then so that that was like another little bit of deep sea diver, like feeling what hasn't been felt. Oh, oh, a new way to look at that situation. Instead of kicking myself, maybe there was possibility there, or maybe yeah. you know, that that could be possibility now or whatever, right? right? And and so now there's something more to that, that that's 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 birthed a little bit you know, a little bit else that's new, right? And and more to integrate. So the so the stages aren't like linear. They could right. happen in exactly. Any moment, yeah. Right. And I'm smiling because yeah. I kept seeing your 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 index finger like this, and I'll <laughs> never forget the day where you we were, we were study we we're doing the warrior and and John leads like this whole Zoom room full of people and we we do the warrior mantra where we say stop right there. What's that? Pause. <laughs> or pause. pause. Yeah, pause. Right there. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. and so if anyone was watching just now, John kept like, you know, even with his, what is his finger, but 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 it's like it, it is a signal, right? It it it's it's like you're pointing to a place in the conversation. You're saying, what's that? And and it's really like making it specific so that my attention goes to it. Yeah. So beautiful. Well, I think we're we're pretty close to the end here, but we might as well zoom to the the very end. Um, we talked about integration, which is really just like inviting the person to imagine you've had this experience, you're seeing something new, and and yeah, we were doing a little of that with my story. It's like okay, so this thing happened on the train, and then you talked about it, you reflected, like so, how does the world look now? Um, and then the very end, sort of a fitting name is is the art of closure. But it doesn't just mean, I mean, it kind of means let's wrap things up in a nice bow, but it's also has something to do with, we had this deep interaction and now it's going to come to an end. And so we don't want to just sort of chop it off at the end and see, bye, but what, what do we do at the art of closure? It's actually called completion. You're out of completion. completion. Right. Similar. Um, feels I, like might a slight... have, I might have heard that phrase somewhere anyway. <laughs> you're you're um, the, you're the co-owner of the circling institute <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for it so yeah the art of completion is is how to like elegantly sort of wrap up an experience that mm -hmm. that really instead of just ends it and you both sort of separate which is what most people do like hey good talking to you seth have a good weekend. Have a good week. See you next time. Right. And so all of a sudden, like we might've been in this deep experience or something important ha happened. And all of a sudden we kind of get nervous or something and go back to our, like, our business brains or something, or, or, or we get nervous about how to end things. Right. So, so the, so that's why it's an art, right. It's to, it's to keep, keep it relational and sort of maybe even summarize a little bit like what happened say in the conversation or in the circle if you were in a circle and what you appreciated about the conversation itself maybe what you appreciated about the other person and just what you what like what happened and and what you're hoping for like in the future so that so that you give it you you honor what just happened mm -hmm. you're not running like just running away from it you're actually giving it giving it its due mm -hmm. right and and um and that really keeps that whatever intimacy was established it sort of like keeps it set there in a way right you know, running from that intimacy going oh now i feel awkward you know so i have to get have to do a quick goodbye you know versus just like that you know that's why people you know everyone's in the living room at a party and they're going to say goodbye and there's an awkwardness. So they, they're kind of rushing to get to the door, but you spend a half hour at the door saying goodbye to somebody because they realize, wait a second, it's not really complete. We haven't really sunk into the completion with each other. Right. We haven't shared like what we, right. what we like, how, how we liked being together and what we got out of it and that type of thing. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the sense of the, the art of completion. So it has a lot to do with appreciation. Yeah. 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 We made it through all seven stages, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So let's let's see if we can demonstrate again. Um, so I think it's just time to 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 see if we can 
can yeah. can can complete our our conversation and and I mean I what I appreciated is that we did I hope uh, but I think we did manage to to sort of just lay out uh, some of the inner workings of a circle, which I was hoping to do. And I appreciate that you allowed me to interrupt and so we could get into some different detail and different kinds of scenarios that come up. Um, but of course, it was impacted by being with 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 you because I've learned so much from you. And then uh, here we are, you know, and it just kind of spontaneously becomes a circle. So if I say, you know, something I'm getting about you is is not just that you you know, love to do this, but it's almost like, it just feels like you just breathe it at this point. It's, it's part of who you are, you know? And, um, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I just, I, and I, and I'm imagining like people watching, I don't know what they'll think, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that they saw your heart. I, I feel like they saw mine. I felt a little exposed a couple of times, <laughs> but, but, but it, you know, it feels good to just, you know, even if someone watched this and thought, oh my gosh, that's not something for me, it feels good to be with you and to and to just just be real in this way and 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 to not sort of edit out the messy stuff. So yeah. that's what I would say about <laughs> what it's what it's like, what I, what I'm still feeling as I'm with you right now. Uh, I feel really touched by hearing all that. Beautiful. And and I think what I've been appreciating about you is how how much joy you have for 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 interacting and 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 just having a a really rich conversation and getting to know somebody your questions are always profound and you have so much to add on your side of it it's not like just you're interviewing and like well obviously with this topic we we, we just could it was so easy to just turn around <laughs> and say okay you right, you be the right. You be the teacher now, or you you share what's what you know about circling. So it made it a really beautiful conversation. I just I loved your, I loved your weaving of the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am really excited, and it's funny. I mean, the story I told, you know, about my past, but like, I think what I have this sense of now is like I finally kind of get it about like, oh, I don't have to hide all these things, and now I'm just realizing. I've been I've been wanting to do this for a long time. There's kind of a backlog, you know. So so if anything, when I'm circling, one of my edges is like, like just keeping keeping <laughs> keeping you know, this all right. Just let's just be with this. And so so it's beautiful to you know just have a little bit of silence and slow it back down. But um, yeah, I am really excited by what this practice you know. Has opened up for me. There's there's tons of excitement, and then I'm I'm looking forward to to breathing it a little more the way I see that that happens with you. Yeah, I hear that. I hear it's like oh, it it gives me something. You meaning you? It gives you something to to slow down, and 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 appreciate like the the moments of in between of what just happened, right? And at the same time. I'm a, I'm just appreciating your 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 irrepressible passion for <laughs> for for communicating. Yeah. And yeah. The joy and your and your 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 curiosity, your unending curiosity to to really get to know and to get to know and to get to know somebody. Yeah. 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 It felt good. It made the conversation just really easy. Like I I I really after just the first few minutes I forgot that oh I get this is a podcast. <laughs> I was just having a conversation with Seth. Yeah, that's right. Well, so let's let's end in the traditional way, like podcasts tend to end. Well, is there anything you'd you'd want to say to the listeners, um, including you know just talking more about the Circling Institute just before we close? Sure. Um, yeah. If this if any of this speaks to you or you feel called by it, uh, you want to learn more. Um, there's, there's lots of choices, uh, just start by going to circlinginstitute.com and that's just it, just www.circlinginstitute.com. One of the places you could start is there's a free webinar called the seven stages of circling. <laughs> and it's like a two hour webinar with uh, the first hour sort of teaches each of the stages in a little bit more depth than we've covered here. And then, uh, there's, um, it's probably about an hour of guy, 
uh, doing a demo circle on, on, on somebody. So you can kind of see that and that's free. So something that you can, you can just do in your own time. Uh, there's the drop-in nights that Seth referred to already. That's on, that's on there. So those are right now they're every Thursday nights. Uh, they're like $20 for a three hour event. Yeah. So that's at uh, 6 PM on the West coast when I tune in on the East coast, it's 9 PM. So make sure you have your time zones, right? But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As a few other things that are that you'll find on there, there's we just put together a uh, a, a a few different excuse me a few different self study programs. So there's something called Tools for Extraordinary Connection. That's that's like our beginning program of, of all the foundational tools for authentic relating for you know what to do to get get to know somebody deeper and take your conversations deeper, create more intimacy, and then the we have our our first two workshops of the first two stages, Sovereign, which is owning your presence and Explorer, getting someone's world. And those are there on the self-study programs too. And they're also there as our weekend, our live weekend intensives. So you have a choice of sort of which way you want to do them. And then for those of you who just really want to create mastery in this, really want to be become a place where come from a place where this this lives in you this, this is in your bones it's it's your way of being that when you talk to somebody they feel really understood and they open up and just to have that capability one there's a whole new level of of being completely comfortable and at ease in your in your body in your skin and two the effect on people is profound like people are just drawn to you when when you're the type of person they know that oh that person i know i can count on him understanding me him or her whatever i, I know that they're going to listen to me that they're going to get me most people maybe don't get me i know that i know i can always count on this person it changes the potential for every single relationship you have in your life and 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 people just want to be with you they they, they want to be friends with you they want to they want to they want to do business with you they want to be around you so to me, I can't think of anything, any skill, or very few skills, I don't want to say it as an absolute, I think of very few skills that are more potent and more comprehensive in, in one's life than really knowing how to how to get someone's world and how to and how to create a sense of trust and understanding. Yeah. So that's the what I'm describing here is called the art of circling, uh, practitioner training program. That's a year-long program. And that's on the site as well. So uh, whatever you're interested in, uh, feel free if you have questions just to to reach out. Our, our contact information, of course, is on there, and we'd be happy to happy to chat with you. Right. And if you ever come on a Thursday night, John is usually there. I'm often there. I can't make it every Thursday night, but, um, you know, so we'd love to yeah. see you there. And, um, John, thanks and so much. This was this was so much and, fun. Oh, it sounds like you wanted to add one more thing. One last thing, yeah. sorry. Uh -huh. And I would just say that if 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 you were touched at all by by this conversation itself and, and just what you picked up here, like try it in your life. Just just right. open up to people more. Ask, you know, ask about them and and like really, really want to know and listen and just keep saying like, what else? You know, and share like how you're being touched by what you're hearing and what you're getting about who they are. And just and then follow your own curiosity. If you do, if you just do those things, your all your connections are going to be a little bit more deeper and more profound. And that's 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 what I wish for all of us. And thank you so much, Seth. This has been really fun being with you. Really nourishing, and and uh, I I love the care uh, and the quality that you put into this. Yeah. Thanks so much, John. Yeah, yeah. I, I just found myself after you said that, like wanting to pause and <laughs> just let a listener, you know, think about what would it be like to communicate this way all the time? So thank you so much, John. This was wonderful. And um, take care, everyone. <laughs>